with me so far? Of course you are. Uh, underneath here, the carcass sides are going to run all the way to the floor, but the centre shaft is going to be fixed to the base. And we've got a 50 mil, all the face frames are 50 mil by the way, you've got a 50 mil face frame on this. So you're going to have a 50 minus 18, which is 32 mil gap under here. And we're going to put little, little feet in there rather than continuous strips. Because if you put a continuous strip in there, if it, it's a lump in the floor, and this is an old property, don't forget, the potential to, to get a wobble on there is quite high. So we're just going to cut little 32 mil blocks and glue those in sort of randomly across the base. So that's the front, all good so far. Oh, the sides as well, I'm going to make those easy. We know it can't be more than 600 mil high. Uh, the top is 18 mil, so I'm actually going to make the sides at 580. Okay, when it comes to the sides, the depths, again, 600 mil tops, 580 to the side carcass. We know we've got 150 by 20 cut out in here. So whatever the width is, we said 200 mil, it needs to be 220 to accommodate that extra little bit at the back here. And then we need to add the face frame into that as well. So 232. Uh, and then again, we want the little 6 mil overhang because we want that to run all the way around. So 232 plus 6 is 238. for the top uh, and 220 for the sides because you've got a 12 mil face frame planted on that. So that is broadly our cut list. Uh, what I've done, the rest of it is, is pretty good because the dimensions have come down very slightly. I can trim down what I've already got, but I will need to recut the tops The because uh, uh, they're, although they're the right width, they're not deep enough. I haven't, I got the, the depth wrong because I, I didn't think about that little that little overhang. So um, yeah, so from this we can then start making an actual cut list. Uh, compare this against what we've got. <laughs> the smart observant people amongst you will have noticed that I'm on a slightly different drawing because I uh, <clears throat> made a mistake on that one. So here we go. Um, so this is our cut list. So let, let's go through what we actually need here. We've got three of these to do. So we're going to need three tops. And they're going to be 1200 by 238. We're going to need uh, six sides. And they're going to be 580 by 220. Because we have the face frame planted on. We'll need three bases. And they are going to be 1152 by. Yeah, we haven't actually talked about the backs at all. Uh, that's where I made the mistake before. 1152 by 194, so 220 less the thickness of the back. Yeah, uh, so 194, 6 mil back in all of these. Uh, the dividers as well, there are going to be three of those. And they will be 530, so the 580 height less the 50 mil height of the face frame where the base will come to. Uh, 530, and again by 194, because they're going to fit within, within the back. Uh, we'll have six sides. No, we'll have six shelves. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> done the sides already. And they will be five, six, five by. I'm going to put a solid lip on those, so I'll make them about 170 for now. And they are going to be 22 mil, because these are bookcases for heavier sort of art books and things, uh, everything else 
so far is 18. And then there's going to be three backs. And they will be 580 high. And they end them here at 530, but I'll keep them in at 580 for now. Uh, 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 so 580 by... 11.52 plus half a thickness of carcass on each side, so 11.50, 60, 11.70. We'll start with that. They can be trimmed down. Uh, yeah, 11.70. They can be trimmed down afterwards, and that will be 6 mil. And then we need to get into thinking about how the back's attached. Normally I, I plant the back on, but because the sides are going to be exposed, I'd normally rebate it, but when you you got a 20 mil overhang there already, add six mil to that. I don't really want to rebate that thick, that deep on the edge. It makes more sense to put it in a groove, I think. Certainly for the sides, you also need to do something with the with the top. And do you rebate that so it just sort of fits in, or do you put a groove in that as well? Uh, that's that's another decision to come to. Grooving is neater. But of course, at the end, because of the overhang, of the top on the carcass, the groove would have to end here. So it gets a bit fiddly. In many ways, it's actually easier to do a rebate. But it's more complicated again, because it's going to be a, a 26 mil deep. It could be a wider groove, I guess. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, all these decisions have to be made. Uh, but that's the essence of how I go how I go about putting a cut list together. That's the essence of how I got it wrong by not thinking this through clearly enough at the very start, uh, forgetting about the little sort of overhang on the edges and all that sort of thing. And. That's how you go about avoiding it, really. Um, not the most exciting video, I know. Um, there's going to be more of these, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> coming through, because I do want to talk about the actual, what I call constructional design. Uh, you know, form and function. Form is the design of how things look, function is the design of how things work. Fabrication as well, a third F word, is the design of how things are put together constructional design is something I do want to talk a little bit about because it's one of those fundamentals and it's one of those things that can trip you up really easily when you're first starting to make little bits and pieces like this. Uh, anyway, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks so much for watching, if you're still watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.